the hell do you mean? I just couldn't, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. And I just felt like she tried to steal the moment and what our experiences were as black people. I just couldn't understand how she could make it about herself in that moment. This thing here, what we talking about ain't got nothing to do with your feelings. You know what I mean? You feel me? This ain't got nothing to do with your feelings. It has to do with what we go through as black people when we step the fuck out of our house. That's what that's, this has to do. This has nothing to do with how it's making you feel. So my girl walks in. Marie walks in, girl. With Assy. Yes, her road dog, honey. So they walk in and off the break. My husband's like, oh man, look at Essie. She ready. She ready. I said, I ain't she ready? Because Essie was like, you should have. So her whole shit was just like, and then Marie was saying it like, hey, at the breakfast, we're here for the brunch. We're here for the brunch. Girl, they look good too. Hey, everybody. It's your girl, Sassy Shantice. I'm coming back with another video. This video is a little late. I told you I was going to do a video yesterday, but I told my Facebook family that I would be dropping a video on Sunday. But yesterday, no, girl, it ain't happened, girl. Um, I started to watch this episode and then me and my family, we got into the discussion about everything uh, that was going on. So then I was kind of exhausted about everything, about talking. So yeah, I couldn't get on camera to talk. So another thing I wanted to mention is that to my subscribers, I am Donna Hampton on Facebook. So if you want to go over, go check out that, go to Facebook and check out Donna Hampton. Also on IG, I am Sassy Shantice. Okay, so y'all, let's go. Um, just want to say first off the break is that I love this group of women. They are powerful. They are strong. They are relatable. They are everything, you know, all shades of color. Like I love this group of women. So let's just get it. She meets up with the councilman, the appraiser and the contractor, um, down on Fair Street. So they're discussing, you know, what needs to go on about her buying the building. I think the appraiser tells her the building is just not for sale. You know, um, it's not for sale. It is for lease. So you can get it for lease and it's going to run you basically he did all the numbers basically it's going to run you about two million dollars so she's like oh, okay she's very surprised to see you know wow it's two, two million dollars so she goes on to tell the guys um that yeah okay well you know i have some friends with some really deep pockets so yeah girl we good so i'm just gonna get together this brunch well she didn't tell them that but we're gonna get all the girls together at brunch and then they will have the discussion coming together to revive Fair Street. And so um, the plan for Fair Street is that she's going to have a venue upstairs. And then downstairs is going to be um, play a place to hold all her brunches. So I think that's perfect for Latish. I do hope that she gets this um, plan underway and that it works. Because I feel like we do need our own communities, um, especially there in Mississippi. And yeah, just to have it as our own community, I think it would be great. And so I just wanted to quote um, what she said because I thought it was really nice and I thought that you know she just put it all together to understand what her vision really is so her vision is for us black entrepreneurs to come together and buy back this block to create generational wealth through black entrepreneurs and business so yeah basically y'all Tanisha is the man for the plan she got it all together and the girls just need to come together with their pockets Girl. And she said that she's confident that this new uh, venue would bring revenue. Okay, so the next part is my girl, Marie and Therese. Okay, so they meet up with the therapist. He's uh, a black male. I love it. I love it, love it, love it for Therese because I feel like he needs a role model. And I just thought it was great. I thought the conversation was great. The dialogue was great. And yeah, so they sit down and Marie basically plays the recording for the therapist. And so the therapist um, is basically listening to the recording and he is like, you know what? I don't even need to hear no more. That's it. You know, he turns to Jerez and asks him, how do you feel about what happened? You know what I mean? And he said, I just felt like everything was happening for no reason because I'm still going to school. So why are you mad? You know, like, why are you mad? And um, my thing with that, I was just thinking to myself, like, why are you mad? Why are you not understanding what your mother is saying? Like, you know what I mean? Like, she doesn't want you to go to a school three hours away and not take care of your business. Like, how are you supposed to be a parent? Or not just a whole parent because you just can't because you're in college. But how are you supposed to um, nurture your kids, hug and kiss your kids, be there for your kids? Sometimes, like, how are you supposed to do that three hours away? You know, I just don't know why 
um, Marie doesn't make him answer to that specific question. And Marie goes into, you don't know how blessed you are. Have a mother who, um, you know, takes care of your kids and, and has your back tenfold. Like she just goes into all of that again. Girl, you keep preaching all of this stuff. And you know, you're not really getting down to the meat and potatoes of what's really going on. He's not trying to be there. Bother with these kids. And you need to tell him, look, you need to be here and that's just it. It's not about none of this other shit because what you're doing is preaching to the choir and it's not helping your situation. So then Marie goes into talking about her upbringing and how, you know, her mother just didn't raise her because she had a substance abuse problem. So, you know, that, that really touched my heart. She basically goes into a, her whole life story saying that, you know, at 18, she had to raise and that, um, you know, when she was a child, her mother abandoned her and left her with her father because of her addiction. And yes, yeah, she was very hurt about that. Her mother wasn't there for love, support, and just to be with her and be a mother. And so Marie said that she vowed that she would not do her kids like that and that she would be there and take care of them no matter what. So for me, that meant that what I see is Marie overdoing it. She's overcompensating for what her mom didn't do. I mean, they're going to go to counseling. That's what she said. So let's see. You know, Marie said that she was hurt. Um, she wanted to die when she was five years old because she just, you know, couldn't take the fact that her mom being, she was really hurt about that as a child. And I just think that that child hurt turned into adult hurt. And yet she's sitting in some of her own stuff and it's manifested in her where she just can't um, pant good, you know? And I feel bad for Marie. I mean, I'm not gonna give her a pity party about it, but you know, we all have things in our lives that we go through and you know, you, you, you just don't get over it. You know, and it, it, it spills over into your adult life. So I think that um, her coming to this therapist and with her son and them coming together about what's going on in their lives is a push forward. And I, you know, kudos to Marie. So the therapist basically tells Jerez he's a man. He needs to control his emotions. You know, you have to be smart about, you know, the way that you move in life because you can't walk around having all these emotions and screaming and cussing everywhere, you know? And I thought that was great advice. Another piece of advice that he did give to Marie, he turned to Marie because he was like, look, do not keep recording anything. You know, that's done. That's over. You know, if, if another confrontation comes like this, then you need to call me. You know, that's just it. I was so happy when he said that because I think that they both really need that man figure right there in that moment. You know what I mean? The therapist has to, um, be very careful in the words that he chooses if they are getting into an altercation and um yeah he has to correct some things because jerez might go left you know so let's see how this plays out and all the best for jerez and marie so in the next thing um latrice is um looking bomb honey yes her hair is laid and when i say her hair is laid it is bomb so i'm gonna put up a picture y'all so y'all can see it girl and y'all see i got my good wig on today girl because i was like oh latrice is giving me all bob vibes honey so yeah i threw my little bob wig on girl so anyway this is the wig and yeah fire honey anyway so latrice is walking up to the front desk and she is holding the eyelash box i think that's the picture that i got and she like what's going on with this there's no eyelashes in here you know as if somebody stole something girl and so yeah um she's she asked about that they don't show anything about that so she then um starts to talk to the girls hey y'all you know just talking to them like a boss we need to do this we need to do that you know being a boss and making sure that her business is running good girl so then the next thing is Letitia and Antoinette meeting up at the Mississippi Black um History Museum something like that it's called and um yeah, they see all of this, you know, history back in the day with slavery. Letitia is getting very overwhelmed with everything that she's saying. You know, it was heavy, y'all. You know, and um, it just reminded me that I need to get some tickets for the museum down in D.C. Because although I did live in D.C. as a child coming up, I now reside in Virginia. Girl, yeah, funny. I love Virginia. Loving me some Virginia. Anyway, now I live in Virginia. And, um, yeah, I'm just not able to go to D.C. and see the museum, the one that Oprah has up for um, Black History. So I will get tickets to go there for my family. So that is going to be bomb. And I can't even wait because I heard that it is a really nice museum. Anyway, this museum in Mississippi was, um, you know, very informational, too. It had, you know, the hangings where they used to attend Howard. So they had some of these same pictures um, in the halls when you go to class. So yeah, one of them reminded me of that. And I'm not going to put the pictures up because yeah, I will put this one picture up though. Because I was like, wow, they actually have um, the chain. So I'm going to put the picture up right here. And I just thought that was, um, 
I thought that was a lot to take in. You know, I can't even imagine being chained, whipped, um, hung, and any, anything like that, you know, what our people went through. So that was sad to see. It was also sad to see the triumphs that our uh, people had to, um, yeah, go through. Letitia is just moving all throughout the museum. She's just like, this is too much. This is too much. She's crying. She's really upset. You know, she's she's still walking around and, you know, being uh, verbal, you know, about everything. But she, you know, it just overwhelmed her a bit. So, yeah. So then they eventually go ahead and sit down. So Letitia explains to Antoinette that, um, yeah, I have a brunch coming up and I want you to attend and, you know, once again, empower black women. I'm not going to tell you what it's about, but yeah, girl, I need your presence, girl. I literally got chills. Like sometimes when people say certain things that touch my heart, I just get chills. After they walked through that, Antoinette said, and I'm going to read y'all what she said. She said, because y'all know she has her um, dental practice being built right now. So she said, I'm going to open up my dental practice and serve my people, girl. I was like, I know that's right, Antoinette. I love that. And I got chills just now saying it, but I was just like, that is so sweet. You know what I mean? Such a young girl, so open-minded, so not just open-minded, but woke. You know what I mean? Know what's going on and ready to give back to her community, girl. So that just was like touching to me. So Tamra meets up with Demon, her ex-boyfriend she met when she was a teenager. So they've been together for, I think, yeah, it says 16 years. And the relationship didn't work out. It, it didn't go bad, but it just didn't work out. So they're sitting there talking. Demon, mm, how you look? He all right, you know what I mean? He your average guy. He got a little bit of muscles. Um, I could tell he works out. He is very soft-spoken, shy. Not soft-spoken in like, you know, a, a type of way, but he is... um. He, was, he seems like a good man, you know, it just seems like, you know, and I don't usually say that about people, but something about him just seems to me that he's a nice, sweet, kind, you know, guy, I don't know. And so somewhere down the line, yeah, they broke up and she was saying how, you know, um, he just wasn't romantic enough. She basically told him that, yeah, you got too comfortable in a relationship. And he was like, okay, well, she was like, well, what do you think about that? And he was like, well, you became two different people. You know, you were Tamra, and then you turned to Tamra Sheree. She was like, well, what the, <laughs> that's my name, <laughs> being all fake. And you know, my thing is, is that I just got a little pissed off because, bitch, don't play. You know what I mean? Don't play. I hate when you bring something to somebody's attention, and then they they put bullshit in it. You know, they pour bullshit all over. Bitch, answer what the question was or actually elaborate on what I just said to you. Don't cover it up because you're uncomfortable. Let's have the conversation. If you don't like something that I said, find it a way to communicate with me so that I understand how you feel. Don't say, eh, 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 oh, Cherie, that's my name, Tamar, that's my name, that's my name. Don't do that because now you're pouring bullshit over and we can't get to the problem. Like I always tell my husband, I hate when he do that. We have some type of um argument or something like that and then next thing you know, he it, the shit goes left because you put some bullshit in it. Let's stay on key of what we were talking about because now we can't get anything accomplished, boo, with you going to the left. So answer what I said or elaborate on what I said and then we will move forward. But and when you keep bringing bullshit into it, like it makes it even worse. So yeah, I don't like that. And that's what Tamra did. So yeah, moving on. So um, they go into talking about kids and she basically is like, yeah, she do want kids and she asked him if he want kids. So yeah, he wants kids. Y'all, I think that Demon is a nice guy. I wanted to work with them. I hope they um get together to try to mend their relationship that they once had. I think he's good for Tamra and we're going to keep a lookout on him. Mr. Demon, girl. Yes, honey. So it's the day of the brunch. It's the Southern Bell Brunch, girl. Yes, everybody is looking nice, you know. Letitia is there. Um, Letitia has this really yellow, pretty dress on. Looks really nice on her skin. She's of a darker hue, and she looks amazing in this dress. It's yellow. She has this yellow bow. Some people don't like the yellow bows, big bows, but I do. I, I thought it was a nice touch to that dress. Um, so she's greeting everybody as they come in. Tamara walks in, looks amazing. Her dress is bomb, y'all. It's like a... um. In the background of the dress, it's like a light pink. And then it has like these floor, um, these flowers all over it. Not too many flowers, like just enough. She got this pink hat, you know, with the little, um, th these hats are starting to, you know, get on my good side. I'm starting to like the hats because certain, these hats at certain times with these dresses be on point, y'all. 
And so, yeah, I'm starting to feel the hats with these dresses. Um, what did Marie have on? Marie had this nice fitting um dress on, and her thigh was out a little bit, girl. Marie was giving a little bit of thigh this time. And so then, um, what did Essie have? Essie had on this, like, burgundy dress. It wasn't giving. I mean, Marie or Essie dress wasn't giving, but they looked nice. You know what I mean? Then they had their little matching hats. Oh, God. Here come Antoinette. Girl. What do you, she look good. Like, it was off the chain. I ain't even gonna lie. Y'all know that's a little young girl. She know how to throw it on, honey. But she looked like she was going to a funeral, girl. What are you doing, honey? She had on this really nice white dress. And then she had on um, this hat that the hat was black and it was small. And it just, the reason why that hat looked like funeral like the material that was on it that, that came over to the side, that's what killed it. That's what killed it in the funeral. Okay, girl. And so, yeah, that's what made it look funeral-like. It had this, like, little piece of, um, I can't think of the name of this type of fabric. And then um, the gloves were black as well. That's what it looked like, girl. You know what I mean? And she tried, she told, I remember, and I was glad, though, because she did tell the teacher, look, that ain't my type of thing, the way y'all be doing. You know, it's meaning the hat dressing up. But she tried, she did, she tried. And Miss Stay, she still look good. Like, you can't even complain. She looked good. She just looked like she was going to the funeral. So she comes with Kaylin, girl. Here we go, honey. She comes in with Kaylin. So Kaylin is her Caucasian friend. And I think she's a business partner. I don't know. That's what it looked like in the next um, episode. So anyway, they're sitting there. Everybody's sitting there. And they um, kicking a boba. Tamara is the host for the brunch. So Tamara gets up. And Tamara's like, um, oh, I'm so glad we're here. It's so nice that all of us ladies could get together. It's black entrepreneurship. And uh, yeah, she starts to get into the conversation of racism. Girl, here we go. A topic that I don't really like touching on because I don't want to offend anybody, you know, but I have to go on and talk about the show. So I'm just going to go, y'all. Anyway, so, um, yeah, Tamara, she posed the question as, hey, has anybody here experienced racism? So everybody puts up their hands. She disclosed that, you know, hey, y'all, I hadn't even experienced racism until last year. I think she said last year. And she was like, I was at a gas station and usually I pull up to the full service, you know, full service y'all for y'all youngins, you know, for the people in the back, girl, that um, don't know nothing about full service. Full service is when you pull up and they can come, they'll come out and pump your gas. So you don't even got to get out the car. So she pulled up. She was like, she hate pumping gas. Girl, they don't even have that no more, I don't think. But anyway, because I would get it. But anyway, she pulled up and she was waiting, you know, for somebody to come out. She said um, several people you know, got their gas on, but she had been sitting there for a long time, and they were white. And she said she noticed that. She said, hey, you know what's going on? And nobody never came out. And, she, you know, that was her experience with racism, and it was, like, right in her face. But they were saying that sometimes it can happen to you, and you don't even know that that's what it is. So Antoinette goes on to say, you know, so everybody is basically giving their account and their experience. So Antoinette says, y'all, I know that we have colorism within our own race. When it comes to colorism, white people don't see that. You know, she said, when I walk into a business meeting, they don't see that I'm lighter than the darker person, you know, and all this color colorism crap. They see a black woman and that's just what they see. So I feel it when I walk into these rooms and yeah, that's the stuff that I go through. Letitia points out that she has suffered from racism since she was little. And she was saying that in her adulthood, she has suffered through racism in restaurants in Mississippi. She has suffered through, um, as far as jobs, she had better credentials, um, more experience and everything, and she just didn't get the job. So yeah, um, these ladies are sitting there talking about their experiences. And the entire time, Kaylin, Antoinette's friend, slash, I think, business partner, is sitting there looking real uncomfortable. And she's just looking like the whole time. So the camera's catching all of her little facial expressions, all of her little gestures. So then she proceeds to get up and walk out, y'all. Antoinette follows her. They get outside. She commits to crime. We don't talk about y'all like that. We don't talk about y'all like that. Okay, yeah, y'all don't talk about us like that. You want to know why? You want to know why? Because we're the ones being treated that way. So there's always a person who's treating somebody a type of way. And then there's a person who's taking the brunt of the shit. And yes, black people, we take the brunt of the shit. And that's just how it is. So I just felt like it was the truth of ours. 
she couldn't take it and she feels like you know she's not one of those people i don't understand how she thought that the ladies were beating up on her but her thing was she was saying that her family just doesn't treat black people like that she disclosed the fact that her great great grandfather is jefferson davis honey is that what you did you just tell us that your great 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 or great 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 some of the some some type of shit like that is jefferson davis girl that man was a slave owner a slave trader she couldn't just sit there and be like oh wow 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 is a strong white lady like we're doing something to you now, i was just shocked at her whole, now let me read off what she said. So she's crying and crying and doing all this stuff. And um, Letitia tells her, it's not about you. It's just not about you. It's not about you. This thing here, what we talking about, ain't got nothing to do with your feelings. You know what I mean? You feel me? This ain't got nothing to do with your feelings. It has to do with what we go through as black people when we step the fuck out of our house. That's what that's, this has to do. This has nothing to do with how it's making you feel to get up get mad and get and, and go out inside crying and now everybody is outside taking care of your feelings and what you're going through as far as i'm concerned that's when that should have never even came out there pacifying your ass it was antoinette leticia and big bird yeah remember melanie melanie was out there and they was just telling her this is not about you this is the way that we feel these are our experiences and yeah that's just the way that it is and then kaylin says i just don't want y'all to think that white people hate black people we don't we don't Antoinette and Melanie um, telling her, letting her know that these are the things we experienced. It hadn't been all roses. It hasn't been all roses and sunshine. And she says, it hasn't been for me either. Y'all, I almost turned off the TV because please stop making it about you, boo. It's not about you. Damn, why, when, when, when is somebody going to take accountability for the things that they have done and continue to do? Nobody is going to ever do that. And then she goes on to say, it was in the 1960s attacking black people. Now we're attacking white people. We have to find a, media, a happy medium. Little girl, you really think it's that simple? We just gonna have to find a happy medium. And did you not just bring up 1960? That was literally a block of history. That has nothing to do with the hundreds of years that we were enslaved. That has nothing to do with all the killings that we have right now as far as police brutality. That has nothing to do with any of that. That has nothing to do with when we walk into a store, people are looking at us like we ain't got no damn money or even have a right to be there. You know, what do you mean we need to come together as a happy unity? It, it, it's, it just doesn't work that easy. It's just not that simple because if it was, well, we'd have been there by now and not having all of this stuff still linger on. It's just still lingering on and it's really nothing that we can do. And people want to say, oh, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. Y'all, I'm hopeful and everything, but I really don't see it. Like, it's always going to be there. So that's just how it is. And I don't ever think that it's going to end. And it's just not. I don't ever think it's going to change. It's always going to be. And, you know, I'm a realist. You know, I just keep everybody, anybody who knows me, you know, family, friends, anybody know. I'm a realist and I keep it real. I just don't see it. You know, because it's always going to be the black, the white thing. And that's just how it is. So, okay, so I got to mention this, y'all. Because this is when all hell breaks loose again. As everybody's having the discussion again, because they come in talking about this same thing. Marie, I guess she got time. Marie was like, uh, uh can we move on? We need to move on. Because she was like, she's ready to talk about what her friend Letitia, you know, had to say and what the big reveal was. So next thing you know, Kaylin says, we're talking about real stuff right now. Marie says, but it's Letitia's brunch, bitch. She didn't say bitch, but it's Letitia's brunch. Kaylin says, I think you have to be in control of things. 
So Essie, you know Marie's best friend, is standing over top of her. I don't know even where she came from, you know? So Essie is standing over top of um Kaylin, and she says, look, the brunch is not about this. This is the teacher's brunch, and you are out of line. So then Kaylin just, like, throws a curb, a monkey wrench, everything in the argument and says, she's a nobody. I said, ooh, Marie about to jump across that goddamn table. I don't know what's about to happen. I guess Kaylin felt stupid. She was like, oh, I attacked her. Girl, attack. So Marie says, um, it's time for her to leave. She need to make my name taste like poop in her mouth because I'm the wrong one. And she said poop, and she probably was going to say shit, but Miss Dorothy Davis was sitting like right there. Y'all know the lady who um, went with Letitia on Ferris Street. She's a very prominent black woman, older woman, like older, older woman, and they ain't had no business even doing none of that shit there. Kaylin decides to tell Marie, come in. <laughs> Come here. Is that what you just said to Marie? She told her to come here. So y'all, mm, this is going to be a doozy, a, a, a hell of a next episode because it starts back off with the brunch. So we're going to see what happens after that. And uh, I'm excited to see it, y'all. I really love this episode. It was very informational. Um, I got a lot out of it. Um, everybody's scene was a situation that we could relate to now. That is all for this episode. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. If you like this video, please hit like. Um, if you just stumbled across this channel and you like my channel, hit subscribe. We have a lot of fun on here. I do wigs, clothes, and um, TV reviews. Just this TV review for now. I think I'm going to do um, Housewives of Potomac girl. because your girl is from DC. Yes, I grew up in DC and Potomac is um, yeah in that area. So yeah, that's going to be exciting. So I will be um, reviewing Potomac, but I don't know when it comes out. So yeah, until next time, I will see you ladies later and gentlemen, if you watch. Bye.